2015 be read the second time. In accordance with the rules of procedure, the debate is now adjourned and the bill is referred to the House Committee. We'll now um, resume the second reading debate on the appropriation bill 2015. Public officers will speak and then the FS will reply. Secretary for Education. President, I thank members for their comments on education during the resumption of second reading debate of the uh, appropriation bill. We are committing to um, developing education so that we can nurture talents to um, face challenges and seize opportunities that may arise. Um, we're going to spend $79.3 billion dollars uh, on um, education and 90% represent um, recurrent expenditure. In other words, 71 billion or one fifth of um, total um, government e um, recurrent expenditure. And when compared uh, with the um, revised um, estimates in 2014-2015, uh, uh, this is an increase of $3.2 billion. In fact, we are um, not lagging behind other advanced economies in our spending on education. Look at other OECD economies. Funding on education on the average accounts for 13 percent of total government expenditure. But we in Hong Kong have a percentage of 16.7 percent. And in uh, other OECD economies, um, in fact, the uh, percentage is um, Decreasing. In fact, um, in 2012-2013, um, we spent about $60 billion on um, education. In 2015-16, it's $71 billion, a cumulative increase of 18%. And then uh, concerning the uh, subsidy um, per student, that has been increased from 44,000 to 53,000. And um, some members have said that um, the amount we spend on education is about 3 to 4 percent um, of our um, GDP. And some say that this is lower than the level in neighboring countries and places. I want to say that, in fact, we have a low tax regime. and. Public expenditure uh, usually only accounts for uh, twenty less than twenty percent um, um, of GDP, and in other in some OECD um, countries, um, public expenditure accounts for forty to fifty percent of GDP. So I don't think it's fair to say that in Hong Kong we're not attaching import enough importance to education. Last year, in the policy address, over ten initiatives in the education uh, field were put forward, and in the policy address this year, there are also new initiatives. For example, um, gradually increasing the number of um, degree um, teaching places in primary schools, and also um, providing uh, more places of um, exchange for um, sec uh, secondary schools and also having sister school arrangements with um, mainland secondary schools. So we're going to continue to make available the necessary resources to take forward these initiatives. Now, the um, uh, we have an aging population. Our student population is um, 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 declining and so we really need to invest in education so as to uh, nurture talents to face future challenges. So we're going to take forward uh, free kindergarten education policies. There is the Committee on Free Kindergarten Education. Um, it has been um, having uh, in-depth studies and has been having discussions with um, the uh, kindergartens and uh, concerning the short-term measures, the government has already accepted the committee's uh, recommendation. And in fourteen fifteen, the um, value per voucher um, uh, uh, is a two thousand five hundred uh, will be increased uh, was increased by two thousand five hundred, and there will be another increase. And uh, the cumulative 
um, total uh, is 29 percent. And then 12213, uh, in fact, we spent 2.8 billion uh, dollars on um, kindergarten education. This will be increased to 4.1 billion, an increase of 46 percent. And uh, we are now, uh, the committee is now. Um, um, near the completion of its work and will give recommendations to the Education Bureau. Members are concerned about kindergarten education as well as the number of um, subvented uh, degree places. At the moment, uh, the UGC adopts um, a figure of 15,000. And then for articulation place, uh, places at um, uh, in, uh, in um, the subsequent years, about 4,000. So altogether, we're talking about 19,000 places in 2014-15 for or rather, uh, twenty four point three percent are in the um, a relevant age group are in um, universities, and there are over ten thousand in um, self financing institutions in degree courses, and so we can see that. 46.1% of those in the relevant age bracket are now studying for degree um, courses. And then uh, we have a, t a total of about 70% uh, in tertiary education. The number of secondary school graduates will drop from 62,000 to about 42,000 in 2022. And at that time, for those who um, can meet the minimum requirements of 3322 DSE, then the supply of um, first year uh, first degree, first year places will uh, be in um, sufficient supply. So in, we have to be very prudent in planning for higher education in the future. We have to attach importance to both quality and quantity. We have to maintain uh, public confidence in the quality of um, our tertiary education. We're going to implement various subvented and subsidized programs so that students can um, further their studies locally uh, in the mainland and overseas. And there will be uh, an extra 2,120 places so as to provide more uh, pathways for further studies for our students. In the last year's policy address, the CE emphasized the importance of vocational education. Vocational education um, provides integration for education and employment. Vocational education can help young people um, give play to their strengths and talents. Last year in June, we set up a task force to promote vocational education. In the middle of this year, the task force will um, submit a report to the Education Bureau. The um, task force will try to um, um, enhance public awareness and recognition of uh, vocational education. President, um, as um, there is no doubt that we are committed to uh, investing in education. We will promote the development of teachers and students. We'll work with the education sector and different sectors in the community to uh, enhance the quality of education in Hong Kong. And so I hope that members will, as soon as possible, um, uh, approve the Appropriation Bill 2015. President. Mr. Raymond Chen, in accordance with uh, Rule 17.2, with regard to the quorum, I'd like to call for account. Thank you.
Secretary for Labour and Welfare, Mr. Deputy, many members spoke in the debate on poverty alleviation, social welfare, labour and uh, manpower development. They've given us a lot of um, concrete opinions and I'd like to make a summary response. In 2015 to 16, in terms of social welfare spending, it amounted to some $59.7 billion, among, accounting for some 18.4% of the total government expenditure. Um, second only to education. When compared to last year, there was in, an increase by 9.5%, showing the government's uh, um, attach, uh, showing that the government attaches a lot of importance and uh, is very committed to supporting the disadvantaged group. We are all concerned about poverty problem. In the latest uh, figures in 2013, um, it's the first time that uh, the, uh, po the poor population dropped below 1 million to 970,000 at a rate of 14.5%. It's a record low in five years. The administration will continue to work through the Poverty Commission uh, by helping the poor comprehensively. We are also working uh, full steam on the LIFA, the uh, living, uh, the uh, low income family assist allowance, in order to support people to become self reliant. In particular, we'd like to take care of the low income children. Um, it's estimated that the spending will be at $3 billion every year, uh, benefiting some 200,000 um, low income families who are not, which are not on uh, SCSSA. It will cover some 710,000 uh, grassroots and uh, it will be rolled out uh, in the second quarter next year. The administration attaches a lot of importance to the poverty problem, and we will work full steam uh, on planning for an aging population. But then we will attach uh, stringently to the uh, prudent financial management principles in order to make sure that public resources will only be used to help the needy ones. In terms of retirement protection, it's a very important social subject, and the Poverty Commission will be uh, coming up with the framework and substance of the cons public consultation, and it's expected that uh, this will be rolled out in the fourth quarter this year. The administration would like the community to have a rational and practical uh, and a pragmatic discussion in order to foster a consensus. In order to show our determination and commitment, we have already set aside $50 billion to, uh, to prepare for that. In the face of an aging population, the administration has been putting in more resources uh, on care for the elderly. In 2015-16, the spending is at about $6.8 billion, representing an 11.2 percent increase when compared to last year. We will implement the policy on home-based care with residential care as a backup. We will adopt a multi-pronged approach in taking care of the needs of the elders. Between March and uh, June this year, we have rolled out uh, some 1,666 uh, places for an under the enhanced home and community care service. In order, we have also stepped up uh, the uh, substance of the program. Through the new thinking, we will be uh, implementing the schemes uh, under the special scheme uh, uh, on privately owned land for welfare purposes. And uh, if all the 60 plus uh, programs can be implemented, there will be an increase by some 7,000 uh, residential care services for elders and also 2,000 daycare services places. The Elderly Commission will be working full steam on the plan for elderly services and uh, it is expected that uh, by next year they, they will be, it will be able to submit a report to the administration. We will also be looking into the feasibility of introducing a voucher scheme for residential care for the elders. The, um, we, are, we are also going to um, offer 
uh, two months additional payment for uh, those under the OAA and OALA and also DA. We expect that uh, the budget will be approved as soon as possible so that the 1.18 million grassroots will benefit. The administration would also continue to put in more resources to support the disabled in order to improve the services. In 2015-16, uh, the overall spending has gone up to some $5.6 billion, representing close to 10% increase. We will also be rolling out new measures in order to benefit uh, those uh, preschool children with special needs and also those uh, who, have, um, who are autistic and also the ex-mentally he he ex -mentally ill. Through the special scheme on privately owned sites uh, for Welfare users, uh, there will be 8,000 plus more places for rehabilitation. In terms of manpower, we understand uh, that uh, there is a need for us to unleash the manpower in order to um, promote a sustainable uh, economic and social development. We also have to create uh, an inclusive and cohesive society so that everybody will be able to um, develop their potential. With an aging population and also a shrinking labor force, these are the due challenges that we are facing. Therefore, one of the um, highlights of our work is to encourage more women and elders to rejoin the labour market. For women, they also have to take care of their work as, as well as their families. Therefore, in 2015-16, we will adopt a phased approach so that uh, there will be more places under the extended hour service for the needy districts in terms of subvented kindergartens and also kindergarten from childcare centres, and the total number will go up from the existing 1,200 to 6,200. To ensure that our local workers will have priority in employment and in order to step up training, the administration will provide uh, appropriate and limited um, support, and we also have to make sure that uh, there will be imported workers uh, for, the, uh, for certain trades. Well, uh, in the first quarter of next year, the Standard Working Hours Committee will be submitting its report while ensuring that our local workers will enjoy priority in, in, in employment and also in order to provide step-up training for them, we will be introducing appropriate measures to import uh, workers which are needed, who are needed by uh, the different uh, trades in order to s ensure that there will be sustainable development in order to meet the needs of the construction sector on skilled workers, the administration will be importing or will be uh, introducing enhanced uh, measures to import workers for the construction sector. We will also be sorting out uh, the details with the relevant sector and the labour sector. All in all, this administration attaches a lot of importance to poverty alleviation, welfare, labour and um, manpower development in order to cater for the needs um, of a society and also the change in our uh, population structure. We will continue to improve the services and we will also promote uh, collaboration between the government, uh, the uh, business and also the uh, non-government sector in order to create a caring and inclusive society. I urge members to support the uh, appropriation bill. Since the president has already ordered that the placards which are not related to this debate should be removed, can I ask a staff member to remove the placard um, at uh, Mr. Lee Chia Yen's seat? Um, SFH, I will now respond to the gist of um, members' discussion during the debate. The recurrent expenditure is uh, ever on the increase for health and hygiene. Um, we have put aside 70.6 billion dollars, an increase of 13 billion dollars, and the recurrent expenditure would be over 5 million, or 16.8 percent of recurrent expenditure. And also this year. The uh, provision for the HA will be $49 um, million dollars or 40 percent more over previous years. We will be adding um, a, a number of beds, and in the long term, we will plow in resources to expand resources at the public hospitals and also improve existing facilities. We are asking the LegCo to support us um, with the expansion of the Red Cross headquarters and refurbishment of the Hong Kong Buddhist Hospital and also to commence the main works for phase one of the expansion of United Christian Hospital. In terms of manpower, we are taking different measures in order to make sure that there is enough manpower to provide services, including expanding the training quota and uh, making use of overseas talent and also recruiting more people, and also to provide more in-service training opportunities and uh, to improve employment conditions. Also, we place a lot of 
um, emphasis on Chinese medicine. In 2013, we set up the Chinese Medicine Development Committee in order to develop Chinese medicine care. In 2014, in the beginning of that year, we uh, accepted the proposal of the Chinese Medicine Development uh, Committee in integrating Chinese Western medicine and Hong Kong Chinese materia medica standards. We announced in the PA 2015 that we will set up um, a testing center for Chinese medicine to be managed by the DH. And the testing center will specialize in the testing of and scientific research on Chinese medicines with a view to uh, setting reference standards on safety, quality, and testing methods for Chinese medicines. In terms of the VHIS, the consultation period ended on the 16th of April. We received 580 submissions. And all in all, the general public support um, improving uh, regulation of private medical insurance. And society and stakeholders have made proposals about the details, including the 12 basic requirements, uh, the premium level, private sector um, service load, and also the supply of manpower for medical services. We will study into all these views, and then we will try to provide um, basic and reasonable protection for consumers. And on that basis, we'll continue to take forward the VHIS and its details in order to improve our proposals. In the consultation report, we will list the consultation results and the way forward. With the support of the community, we plan to do the relevant legislation work and uh, to implement VHIS. Protecting food safety is another important initi initiative of the government. In the coming year, we'll adopt a multi-pronged approach in order to enhance the food safety standards of Hong Kong. The Center for Sa Food Safety in 20. 14 uh, tested 64,000 samples, or nine samples for 1,000 population. And this compares favorably with that of other countries. In September 2014, uh, there was the Taiwan substandard lard incident, and the public expressed deep concern about the safety of edible oil. To address the public, public concern, the FHB and the ENB have decided to step up regulation of the safety of edible oil and the recycling of waste cooking oil in Hong Kong to protect Hong Kong's international reputation. We are now making the relevant legislative framework, and we will uh, consult the public on the proposals in the first half of 2015. Also, ever since the Fukushima incident um, in 2011, CFS has stepped up the regulation of um, radiation control of Japanese imported food in order to uh, protect food safety. Uh, if food is imported by sea, the CFS will contact the importers for testing according to the information in the import papers. And also with regard to the supply of vegetables from the mainland, administrative measures have been put in place to make sure that vegetables coming into Hong Kong should only come from registered or accredited farms. Um, which are registered with the AQSIQ. And every year, the CFS sends people to the registered or accredited farms in order to make sure that uh, vegetation coming into Hong Kong are safe and hygienic. Also, at Mencam Tow, the CFS also monitors imported vegetables and would also check the lorries taking vegetable into Hong Kong and also test for pesticide residues. With regard to the consultation on a new agricultural policy, we have received 1,100 submissions in the last three months. Overall, the general public and the industry support continued development of agriculture and also the direction for development in the consultation paper, including the setting up of the agricultural park and the setting up of the uh, agri agricultural fund. We will give comprehensive consideration to views gathered in the consultation period in order to come up with a new agriculture policy. And in the, at the appropriate time, we will announce the details. And also, some members are concerned about um, the AFCD. We are promoting um, the message of being a responsible uh, pet owner. And also, we have started the trap neuter return uh, trials program uh, so that we can regulate um, animal sales and also particularly dogs. Through the interdepartmental working group, we will uh, improve the uh, reports about uh, cruelty to animals. We also thank members for speaking on the hawker policy. We tried to 
um, set up a hawker policy that can accommodate the views of different stakeholders so that we can still have buoyant hawking uh, activities and at the same time we can preserve environment hygiene. The uh, actual policies should be spearheaded bottom up or in app from the districts and they should receive the support of the community. We will follow up with the relevant district councils and we will give uh, consideration to the feasibility of the proposals. With regard to public markets, the administration has already introduced the main results of the consultative uh, study including uh, the functions and positioning and also improvement to market environment. We will continue to study the consultation's recommendations in detail and plan to put forward concrete improvement proposals for a public for a number of public markets. Uh, we will also consult the relevant <coughs> consultative committee beforehand and if there are um, technical or um, operational restrictions we'll consider them as well. In the middle of the year we will talk to the relevant subcommittee of the LegCo um, our responses to the consultants' recommendations and also the concrete plans to improve the uh, operation environment in different markets. With these remarks, I hope members will support the appropriation bill. Thank you. SCED. Mr. Deputy, um, I, work, um, I thank members uh, for expressing their views. Uh, first of all, on tourism, I uh, thank um, the support of uh, the main authorities for announcing. Um, at a request of Hong Kong, uh, adjusting the adjustment of um, the um, um, the multi um, visit um, scheme, and we believe that um, this new measure, um, which will restrict um, the um, travel to Hong Kong by mainlanders, will certainly uh, achieve um, the effect of um, tackling parallel trading, and. This uh, will also address um, the impact that um, the increasing number of visitors to Hong Kong on various districts. As um, a hospitable place, um, we welcome vis visitors to Hong Kong. The um, trade, uh, the uh, tourism board uh, will um, spend um, the allocated eighty billion dollars uh, to promote Hong Kong. Um, we're going we're, we're gonna to launch um, the um, the super Jessel, um um, program um, to um, stimulate uh, retail spending, and we will also be uh, mounting uh, summer um, promotion programs to attract more uh, overnight visitors to come to Hong Kong. Some uh, suggested that um, a boundary uh, shopping centre be set up at Lok Ma Chow. Uh, we need to uh, look at the planning uh, land and all the, all the various um, procedures. The government has set up a, an interdepartmental working group um, and the uh, Tourism Commission will be coordinating various departments um, to look at various areas involving uh, planning and lands and we have to uh, go through all the relevant procedures. In order to attract to to increase the um, attractiveness of um, the attractions, um, there will be new hotels, um, a new development at the um, Disneyland. And the government is liaising with um, the Disneyland regarding the expansion of the second phase um, development. As regards uh, food truck and members expressed um, considerable in interest, we are collecting. Um, experience from other jurisdictions and come up with um, a plan that is uh, most suited to Hong Kong. The um, free-to-air terrestrial TV is of concern to members. On the 1st of April, the C in Council decided uh, that um, the ATV's license uh, will not be renewed. In order to comply with the 12-month notification period under the law, ATV can continue broadcasting until 1st of April next year. The decision will um, af affect um, the, the choices of um, the audience, um, in particular uh, half a million people uh, who haven't quite um, switched over to um, digital format and for some time um, they will only be um, left with um, only two analog um, stations. So we are liaising with RTHK to provide two analog uh, channels to uh, broadcast um, the suitable programming uh, under the 
uh, free-to-air terrestrial uh, broadcasting. Uh, but these um, RTHK uh, channels cannot uh, replace um, the commercial TV stations. It, it's just um, an expedient arrangement. Um, we hope that um, in this transitional period, uh, those um, audience uh, who don't otherwise have a choice and will be given a choice. As regards HKTVE, uh, it is expected that um, the um, licensee will uh, roll out the services uh, for those um, who haven't switched over to uh, digital TV um, will be given more of a choice. Within uh, the uh, HKTVE um, undertook that um, there will be a China Cantonese and an English channel that will be made available um, 12 months and 24 months after the, um, the inception. We will uh, monitor the situation. We will come up with um, measures um, to minimize the impact of uh, the non-renewal of um, ATV license. As regards the creative industry, in particular, the film industry members also um, made their comments. We're injecting $200 million to the FDF to promote um, the development of Hong Kong films. There will be more production of local films. There will be uh, talents to be nurtured. There will be promotion um, the um, Hong Kong films um, as a brand. The IT um, is very important uh, to Hong Kong. We are creating um, a good environment for the IT business to commercialize um, the um, their ideas through the cyber port and uh, cyber uh, port and the um, ITF. Uh, we are helping uh, them to overcome all the various cha challenges at the beginning of the business. The OGCIO has also uh, launched um, an I startup at HK which uh, provides a whole array of uh, information about startups. The uh, startups uh, can also upload um, the information, the videos about the companies in order to get in touch with the uh, potential investors. In 2014, um, the ITF um, has uh, completed a review and a report has been submitted. The it has been confirmed, or the role of the ITF has been confirmed. We are grateful to the Finance Committee um, for earmarking um, $5 billion um, to the ITF um, in February. And the cash rebate um, program will be incorporated into the program. We will make full use of the resources. Um, there will be um, an enterprise uh, support uh, program uh, to replace um, the SME scheme. The uh, businesses, um, regardless of the sizes, uh, will be incorporated. Uh, the funding allocated will be increased from $6 million to $10 million. Uh, there will not be any particular requirement regarding um, repayment of loans. And there will also be um, an IT uh, investment fund to uh, meet the need of um, funding. Now, the, this, this may be on a pilot basis, and this is restricted to um, the, the tenants and also those who have been through the incubation program. But we hope that um, this will encourage um, more angel investors and investment fund to, to invest in um, the IT companies in Hong Kong. By the time this has become a tour, we will enhance an operation uh, like um, the eligibility and the funding uh, requirements will also be fine-tuned. Uh, fine the IT Advisory Committee uh, had its first meeting on the 15th of April. The committee will meet on a regular basis to look at um, the strategic um, uh, ways um, to enhance IT in Hong Kong and make, offer advice to the government. IT represents an important driver in Hong Kong. It is supporting a lot of different sectors. On two occasions, um, this administration has uh, proposed the setting up of an IT bureau to coordinate all the policies. Unfortunately, because of filibustering, the ITB failed to be up and running in the, part, in the last financial year. Last month, uh, we submitted the uh, two resolutions regarding the ITB. The, select, the uh, subcommittee has already completed its um, 
scrutiny, uh, we will be moving um, two resolutions regarding the transfer of power. The, there will be uh, funding proposals uh, regarding um, the uh, manpower. We will be submitting the details to the Finance Committee as soon as possible. I hope the members will give their endorsement uh, for this uh, to be set up. Welcome. Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, Mr. Abba Chen. Although it's lunchtime, uh, we have too few members in the chamber, so I invoke uh, ROP 72 for a head count.
财经事务。Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, Mr. Deputy, I thank members for their comments on development of the financial services、uh, during the special FC meetings. I thank members for the recognition of the importance of this area. Now, I would like to.、Uh, Respond to members' comments in a few important areas. A few members are concerned as to how、uh, we can maintain our competitiveness as a world financial center and to attract overseas investment. More and more multinational companies are setting up their regional、uh, financial treasury centers in Asia. Hong Kong, as a major hub in financial services and logistics, we are well positioned to grab these golden opportunities. In this budget, the FS. Encourage multinational companies to set up their、uh, financial treasury centers, corporate treasury centers in Hong Kong. Many multinational companies will place their regional headquarters and corporate treasury centers at the same place, and therefore this policy will help to stimulate our overall economy. We're going to amend the. In a revenue ordinance to allow, under specified conditions, interest deductions under profits tax for corporate treasury centres, and reducing profits tax for specified treasury activities by 50 percent. The administration plans to consult the industry within this year for introduction of a bill to the council in the next legislative session regarding asset management. Hong Kong is managing over sixteen、uh, trillion、uh, million dollars in assets. We are number one in the world in Asia. We would like to attract different kinds of funds to be stationed in Hong Kong so that we can be a full-fledged fund services center. So we are going to provide a legal framework for introducing an open-ended fund company structure. So this will enrich our legal framework in addition to、uh, the one uh, for um, equity trust funds, so that、uh, we can attract more private equity funds to Hong Kong. To do this, on the twenty fifth of March, we introduce a bill to the council, so that. Private equity funds can also enjoy profits tax exemption available to all other offshore funds. We hope that the bill can be passed as soon as possible.、Uh, we will also expedite the mutual recognition of funds between Hong Kong and the mainland. This、uh, will further enhance、uh, the process of mutual access of、uh, the assets on mainland and in Hong Kong, and this will also enhance our competitiveness. The Hong Kong Shanghai Stock. Connect has been operating smoothly since its launch in November last year. The、um, capital markets of the two places are now moving towards full mutual access, and I think we have achieved a milestone in this. The arrangement has offered more options for investors. It will also help to enhance our offshore remittance business, and will bring new opportunities for our financial intermediaries. Including investment in A shares and、uh, also investment management, market research,、uh, trusts, and broker services for international investors. We are now discussing with the relevant authorities of the central government on the launch of the Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect, so that we can、uh, further mutual access of the. Capital markets of the two places. We also have to ensure stability of our financial market, and therefore there has been very close cooperation between the government, Hong Kong MA, and we also keep track of the latest trend, world trend in regulation, in、uh, devising regulatory measures. We'll consider the concerns and interests of different sectors. This will boost investors' confidence and. Enhance our attractiveness to foreign investments, and、uh, this also maintain our position as a world financial center. A sound regulatory system, as well as a, a mature and diversified market, and also a pool of talents in this regard, will help us to contribute to the country's one belt one road、uh, development. This will also help to attract capital. 
and uh, we have multilateral agreements to enhance our cooperation with other um, economies. Uh, financial technology can add impetus to our economy. Hong Kong is a world city. We are we have free flow of information, and we have a very uh, rich um, technological industries. Uh, new kinds of service provide, providers, including set up startups, uh, using technology for innovation. For instance, they try to use a big data for analysis. We have um, various opportunities for innovation, and new things are also emerging. This has uh, totally changed the traditional mode of uh, delivery of services. Also, bring new challenges to our. Economy and therefore the FS has proposed that a, a steering committee for a financial technology be set up. I have appointed a steering committee with representatives from the academia and also the uh, stakeholders. It has already held its first meeting. We need uh, the right. Uh, conditions and the uh, sound regulatory framework. We need uh, service providers and uh, new uh, startups, and this involves a change in behavior. We will maintain very close liaison with stakeholders, and we will draw reference from other economies to see our potential for developing financial technology and also measures to promote the development of uh, this sector so that within this year we can uh, move towards uh, becoming a center of financial technology. We need professionals, we need talents, we have a great demand for manpower. Taking on board views from the industry, the FS has proposed to spend $100 million on a three-year pilot scheme on manpower training. We will focus on the insurance sector and the asset management sector. We will discuss with the relevant stakeholders to map out the details of the program to ensure that it can suit the needs of the sector. We will consult the FA panel of this council and then we will seek funding approval from the FC. We hope that the pilot scheme can help to attract more young people to join these industries and help to promote uh, the partnership between financial institutions, uh, the academia, and also the stakeholders so that we can provide the right environment for manpower training. Hong Kong is a financial services hub. We attach a lot of significance to our services. We will grasp the opportunities available and we will ensure a proper regulation and manpower training. I urge members to support and pass the appropriation bill 2015 as soon as possible. Thank you. And now call upon the financial secretary to reply, Mr. Albert Chen. Everyone is waiting for the FS to speak. So can we have more people to listen to him? 17-2, please.
正話都幾次點人數，用咗幾多時間？我講到，佢聽到唔得。財政司司長 ，The Financial Secretary, Mr. President, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the public and various sectors of the community for their valuable views on the budget over the last two months. Honourable members expressed their views on individual policy areas during the 18-hour debate held on two consecutive days last week, and five secretaries have just responded to their views in detail. Here is my response. I shall first give a brief account of the latest situation in Hong Kong, then share my views on maintaining fiscal stability and developing our economy. The first is the economic situation. Beset by the weak global economic conditions, Hong Kong economy grew only at a moderate pace in the past few years. Now, in 2015, the global econo economy is still shrouded by a multitude of uncertainties in a volatile climate. Last week, the international Despite the launch of a new round of quantitative easing measures by the European Central Bank, the pace of recovery remains slow. The inflation rate in the eurozone remained a negative for four consecutive months, pointing to lingering deflation. Given the elevated level of unemployment, the instability of the geopolitical situation, and the host of unresolved structural problems, the outlook is still a matter of concern. Following the sales tax hike last year, Japan experienced two quarters of economic contraction before resuming growth in the fourth quarter. The rebound was, however, weaker than expected. The economy has yet to step out of the shadow of deflation. Inflation or regain growth. A new normal is nevertheless developing in the mainland's economy. In face of downward pressure, the central government has set the growth rate for this year at 7%, and there is still adequate policy headroom to achieve the intended target, assuming a crucial supporting role in bolstering Hong Kong's economy. The pace of recovery in the U.S. is relatively steady, with a strong employment growth. The unemployment rate dropped to a low level of 5.5 percent in March. Yet the latest figures show a slightly slackening growth in the U.S. economy, as evidenced by the export performance being affected by a stronger exchange rate and lower than expected orders for durable goods and performance of retail businesses. Along with the fact that the recovery of the housing market is awaiting further consolidation. While the U.S. Federal Reserve Board removed the word "patient" when referring to interest rate rise in its policy statement after the meeting in March, the Federal Open Market Committee made downward revisions to the forecast of U.S. economic growth, inflation, and policy interest rate. It added uncertainties to the timing and pace of the U.S. interest rate hike. This, coupled with the Fed's mandatory policy that runs counter to QE of the central banks of Eurozone and Japan, arouses my concern that the global financial market will be more volatile this year, making it more difficult to keep track of capital. Flows and thus affecting the global economic growth. The persistent, extremely low interest rate environment has flooded the global markets with excessive liquidity, thus fueling the local property market. The exact timing and pace of the U.S. interest rate hike are still subject to uncertainties. We must not lose sight of the risk of a property bubble as long as the low interest rate environment persists. I shall continue to monitor the property market closely, and I will not hesitate to introduce measures when necessary to maintain the healthy and steady development of the property market and safeguard the stability of our macroeconomic and financial systems. The complicated external environment, combined with a stronger U.S. dollar, inevitably put a drag on Hong Kong's trade. Performance, even viewed against a low base of comparison last year, Hong Kong's merchandise exports only saw moderate year-on-year -year growth in the first two months of this year. While the labour market has stable and the unemployment rate stays at 3.3 percent, a level which signifies full employment, global economic slack, if continued, may weigh on the local, local labour market. I cannot be optimistic about the performance of our domestic economy this year. I've 
forecast that the real growth rate of Hong Kong's economy will range only from 1 to 3 percent this year, lower than the average trend growth rate of 3.9 percent over the last 10 years. The Business of the retail industry and some of the sectors was affected by the Occupy movement last year. The retail sale has been on a subdued trend, and retail sales value in the first two months of this year recorded a year-on-year -year decrease of 2%. Inbound tourism stayed lackluster too. The number of non-mainland visitors continued to fall, slowing, showing a year-on-year -year decrease of 5% in the first three months, and total visitor arrivals during the Chaming Festive period in early April dropped over 10%, the first decline over the past five years. This is undoubtedly a warning sign. In this year's budget, I have announced an array of measures to support the small and medium enterprises and sectors which were affected by the Occupy movement. These measures can provide some timely support to ease of impact on the overall economy. To rebuild the global image of Hong Kong and the confidence of investors and tourists, I have announced in the budget the allocation of $80 million for the Hong Kong Tourism Board to step up its promotional efforts in neighboring regions and offer merchandise concessions to attract tourists. I shall also allocate an additional $26 million to the Information Services Department to further promote internationally brand Hong Kong. I expect that these measures will all achieve the desired objectives. In the face of the downside risks to our economy this year, I have proposed in the budget relief measures amounting to $34 billion to alleviate the financial burden on the public as well as stimulate consumption, stabilize the economy and preserve employment. Together with other initiatives in the budget, these expenditures will have a fiscal stimulus effect of boosting economic growth by one percentage point. As to inflation on the back of subpar global economic growth, global commodity prices soften, imported inflation stays been and local cost pressures are also moderate. The underlying inflation rate in the first quarter of this year averaged 2.7 percent. I forecast that the underlying inflation rate for 2015 as a whole will be 3 percent, lower than the 3.5 percent in the last year. Mr. President, the global economy has stayed sluggish after the financial tsunami in 2008. However, Hong Kong has maintained economic stability and fiscal health during these years. This is largely attributable to the fact that we have been upholding fiscal discipline and managing public finances prudently. In the medium-range forecast of this year's budget, I have projected a surplus in the government's consolidated account in the coming five years. Some say that the alert made earlier by the Working Group on Long-Term Fiscal Planning about the servicing of structural deficit within 10 years might be out of tune with the reality. They may be unaware that the medium range forecast has not taken into account the spending on new initiatives, let alone the impact of aging population on economic growth and government expenditure. The working group estimated in its first report that our working population would continue to expand in the next few years. That's economic growth and government revenue will still exceed government expenditure. This living with sur surplus period, according to the working group, might give the community a false sense of financial security. However, when the short to medium term is over, the working population will be shrinking from 2018 onwards, slackening economic development and government revenue growth. Aging population will inevitably result in an increase in public expenditure, especially on medical and welfare fronts. A structural deficit is bound to emerge when expenditure growth keeps outpacing revenue growth. To maintain the government's fiscal health, we must take forward a combination of measures to contain expenditure growth, stabilize revenue, and save up appropriately. All this help to sustain adequate fiscal strength and flexibility. I have announced in the budget the establishment of a future fund, which is meant to be long-term investment for a portion of the fiscal reserves to yield better investment returns. Some members worry that the establishment, establishment of the future fund is a financial management technique for government to freeze resources and avoid expenditure growth. I must re reiterate that establishing the future fund is an investment strategy of the fiscal reserves and has nothing to do with expenditure. The future fund will remain a component part of the fiscal reserves. If we are to use it, we must seek prior approval from the Legislative Council according to established practice. Besides, the establishment of the future fund will not at all affect the government's commitments to people's livelihood and social development. Both the total expenditure and recurrent expenditure of government have more than doubled since 1997-8. Mr. President, to maintain our fiscal health in the long run, the most fundamental means is to sustain Hong Kong's economic vibrancy and improve the business environment of the city. Therefore, 
providing diversified employment jobs for people. Hong Kong's traditional political pillar industries such as trading, logistics, business and professional services as well as financial services have clear advantages internationally. Under the new development of the One Belt One Row initiatives, our nation emerging markets along the routes will further present tremendous opportunities and room for development of these industries. I consider that Hong Kong can actively take part in building the One Belt One Row as a supporter, connector and investor. Hong Kong is a major asset management centre in Asia with rich experience in the international market. Our management talent is capable of providing related services for the development of products under the One Belt One Row initiatives. We can play a professional supporting role for these projects by rendering services and risk management, auditing and accounting, sales and marketing, legal and arbitration, as well as architectural planning and surveying. As an international commercial hub with an extensive network of business connections, Hong Kong can play an intermediate role for governments and enterprises all over the world, facilitating economic and trade cooperation, as well as spurring infrastructure and business development. Besides infrastructure development in countries along the One Belt One Rail will be seeking huge cap capital. Hong Kong at the international leading edge of financial services can provide an effective and high quality financial platform to raise capital for these infrastructure projects. The Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, AIIB, currently under heated public discussion, is a key initiative to promote financial intermediation under the One Belt One Row. We have indicated to the central government that we intend to become a member of the AIIB. We have received support from the central government to grasp um, the latest development, the Hong Kong SAR government's representatives have joined the Chinese delegation to attend the preparatory meetings of AIIB. In the near future, we shall encourage and help the commercial sector to have a better understanding of the one belt one row. And I also plan to lead business delegations to visit some economies along the one belt one road to strengthen our political and commercial ties with them. I, the idea put up in the budget to introduce food trucks uh, has aroused quite some responses, an indication of fairly high expectations from the public. This commercial, Commerce and Economic Development Bureau has, in collaboration with departments concerned, including the Food and Health Bureau, Food and Environmental Hygiene Department, Transport Department, Fire Services Department, and the Electrical and Mechanical Services Department, studied such aspects as licensing, mode of operation, environmental hygiene, and site selection. We are also actively collating information on licensing and successful cases in overseas countries. We are also identifying suitable parking sites for food trucks in order to introduce food trucks to Hong Kong as soon as practicable, we shall, in the first stage, seek to deal flexibly with the licensing of food trucks under existing legislative framework, as long as the requirements of food, on food hygiene, fire safety, and free traffic flow are met, Mr. President. As in the past two years, some individual members have proposed a considerable number of amendments to the Appropriation Bill 2015. This year sees a record high of over three. 3,900 amendments. The number has been reduced to 618 after the ruling on Mr. President. Yet discussions on individual items take time. Voting alone will still require around 20 hours. I have to point out that the funds on accounting totaling $81.6 billion previously authorized by this council are only sufficient to meet the overall government expenditure before the end of May. Government departments and the public sector will begin to see resources running out in early July, June and thus be unable to maintain normal services. This will affect the payment of salary for June to civil servants and subvented sector staff and even affect the release of social welfare payments at a later time. The timely passage of the budget bears on significant economic and livelihood issues. It affects not only government operations and the delivery of such public services as healthcare, education, livelihood, enforcement and judicial services, but also the well-being of our societies and citizens from all walks of life. Government will make every effort to support this council scrutiny in parallel. We shall also get ready for any possible scenarios to minimize the negative effects of insufficient resources on the community at large. The passage of the budget will enable the early implementation of the support and relief measures announced, thus benefiting the general public and various sectors in a timely manner. The beneficiaries will include over 1 million eligible recipients of comprehensive social security allowance, OH allowance, OH living allowance and disability allowance. For the tourism industry and sectors affected by the occupied movement, the promotional and support measures laid out in the budget are also of great significance amid the current difficult time. I earnestly seek member support for an early passage of the appropriation bill in the overall interest of the community, and I sincerely appeal to members not to delay the passage. 
with meaningless filibustering tactics just because they want to raise objections simply for the sake of doing so. Their act out of personal political aims will only lead to a lose-lose situation in which all sectors of the community will suffer unnecessarily. I so submit, Mr. President. Thank you. I now put a question to you, and that is that the appropriation bill 2015 be read the second time. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Mr. Raymond, uh, Mr. Albert Chen claims the division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
Oh, it's broken. Voting begins. Please verify your votes. If there are no questions, then voting is closed and the results will be displayed. 54 present, 36 for, 12 against, 5 abstentions. The question is agreed by majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Appropriation Bill 2015. Committee